Grand Rising bag family. Grand Rising. Out with a, another day of uh, activities at Black Acres of the Gambia. Uh, let me come out here. I'm inspecting a drip line. Make sure it's dripping as proper. And I see a lot of water out here. Now, why is this water here? There's a leak right there. See right there, guys? There's a leak. So I gotta find out why that's. Oh, okay, it's not leaking. It's dripping from here. See that ski knot right there? Now, that ain't ideal, but uh, it shouldn't be shooting way over there. It should be more or less. on the ground can't figure that out but uh, anyway let's move on down the line everything is dripping as it should with the exception of things like that but we just have to adjust that solar panels are still kicking in sort of a gloomy day today the sun hasn't kicked out yet and the workers haven't showed up but uh, that ain't gonna stop us none and this is all the extra drip irrigation line that has been wasted. We're gonna find out a use for it by having a male-to-male -male connector to reuse this pipe instead of having all that wasted. Yes, we brought the contractors out to install our drip irrigation system and both contractors wasted this much. I say that right there. Uh, is about 200 meter lines, two or more 100 meter lines of drip irrigation pipe that was just wasted. You know what I'm saying? If only we can hold these guys accountable and say, hey, for every Delossi that we waste, it comes off the contract to see if these guys uh, do a little bit better. You see right here it's dripping, but unfortunately we didn't mix the right uh, components of manure to have something growing so um, you can see the spots from the drip irrigation is dripping down here that's good we got that and we also got the um, opposite side um, uh, filling up as well and again, the opposite side is everything that's not on the drip irrigation, which is basically the residuals of this right here. Brought a guy in, started showing us his certificates and flim flammed and, you know, shot up a good bunch of bull. We bought off on it and stuff, and the guy quit on us, left us with uh, some junk. So anyway... We're going to have a lady harvest the uh, tomatoes today. You see the red tomatoes over there? We're going to harvest those. And whatever we don't keep or take to our, uh, whatever we don't keep uh, for ourselves, we'll take it to the market. You can see where the drip is going. And today, I have to come out here and uh, take some of these pineapples. Uh, the first one we had was very delicious. First one we took from our garden was very delicious. And um, we got a couple of more that's yellow. Now I keep telling the women, just to see how I'm not getting clear to them, I keep saying move the drip irrigation line closer to the plant. When they come in and add manure and all this other kind of stuff, they keep the line away from the plant. So even though it's dripping, it's not getting directly on the plant. It's, it's, it's a wasted effort. You see all over there, it's a wasted effort, but uh, I don't know. We definitely got to communicate our um, purpose or uh, intention to the people a lot better. And don't say, well, we don't know the language because we know enough to get by and we do have translators and stuff. But anyway, uh, 
that's that's a topic for another video we got three pineapples that look like they're ready to harvest that's one that's two when they start turning golden yellow or brown or, or yellow whatever it's just time to take them so that's three that's three we take the uh pineapples harvest those three cut the crowns off put them in some water and throw them right back in the ground and stuff so when sweet juice of mama she took raheem somewhere when um she comes back we'll probably go ahead and take these pineapples if we don't have the guy coming in for the uh kitchen cabinets yes we're going into our second year of dealing with the brother and uh a uk brother and uh seeing if we can finish up this kitchen because even though we're staying inside the house guys it's still not complete still going on issues still having issues with contractors and stuff but you know that's part of the deal you know what i'm saying so anyway i think i told this story once before when i was in undergraduate school in the republic of korea i'm stationed over there for about two years and um I took this African centric class. I always would take Afrocentric classes. And the brother was saying something to the effect that most people don't want to do business on the African continent because there's no ease. Everything is stressful, problematic, so on and so forth. And this is back in the mid, the early to mid eighties. I said, I don't care how stressful it is. I still take it. I'm, much rather deal with the brothers and sisters uh, over here than the devils in the illusion and stuff. So, sure enough, a couple of decades or a few decades later, we finally made it to the African continent. And boy, was they right. It is problematic um, getting certain things done on the continent. But again, it's well worth it. Well worth it. Yep. So, uh, just deal with it as we can and uh, hope the ancestors bless us uh, to get things uh, rolling the way we like. Because we sure gonna keep pushing. Me and Sweet Juicy Mama, we gonna keep pushing. So, anyway. Try to massage these little kinks out the lines. Uh, and we was interested in knowing how the drip irrigation was going to pan out during rainy season and stuff. See these little kinks in the line like that there? Hate those, but uh, at least I see we're getting water to the... Uh, for this uh, crops and here we got to put some kind of scarecrow because you know we got rats out here and stuff enjoying meals and see how they eat up the tomatoes. Guess a scarecrow is something to fix that but at least it's good that they like it. I'm going to take these two right here eat these for breakfast. So anyway the drip irrigation is standing up guys. Uh, one thing that we discovered or I discovered is I believe uh, we have a poor, I'm going to call it the poor man system, drip irrigation. When we were installing the drip irrigation, I kept asking the guys, where's the pump? Where do you put the pump to kick it down line? To me, in my experience now, that's the rich man drip irrigation system. You just hit a pump, it'll kick on and it'll drip as long as you want it to. And then, once you think the crops have got enough water, then you shut it off. In my opinion, uh, 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 experience, from what we got now, that is the op for drip irrigation system. Now, if you can't afford that expensive system, which I was opting for but didn't get, uh, you can take the poor man system, which is basically uh, a gravity flow. You send the water, you uh, take the water up from the borehole. 
You take the water up on the borehole and put it in some tanks, some poly tanks or whatever containers you might have and let it free flow to the garden. I call that the poor man system because it's time consuming. It's, it's, it's cheaper, so that's probably an advantage. It's cheaper, but you cannot drip unless you have those tanks filled. So after you've ran the system for two, three, whatever hours you run the system to give your plants enough water, you have to fill those tanks again. You know what I'm saying? And that is time consuming. And I do that when we get off the shift. When we get off the shift and the people have left, I fill the tanks back up so I can drip them again the next morning. And sweet juice of mama's all on my back. I thought this system would be able to drip at night. And I was like, no, nah, babe, you weren't paying attention. Um, uh, if the tanks ain't filled, then you can't do the drip irrigation and stuff. And uh, at night, there's no sunlight. So uh, you're not going to run a drip irrigation system. Uh, at night if those tanks ain't filled and it takes a couple of a few hours a couple to a few hours to fill up that drip irrigation system poly tanks so you can free uh, so you can gravity flow or drip uh irrigation in the morning and stuff so again perhaps when things kick off and uh or we expand we'll get the rich man system versus what i refer to as the poor man system you see what i'm saying so Right now, we just want to see how it uh, plays out during rainy season. Uh, but so far, so good, with the exception of the time-consuming uh, nature uh, of the uh, drip irrigation system. And uh, everything is uh, looking good. Now, on these right here, on the eggplants are looking outstanding. We've never had the eggplants look this great uh, going into rainy season. But um, the tomatoes, I don't like the way they droop over. And again, you have problems communicating that to your workers. Let's erect something that'll hold them up. But uh, again, that's another video for another time. So anyway uh oh my water's overflowing so anyway that's a, a brief recap of uh what's going on with our drip irrigation system now pull this out right here stick it up here or better yet let me turn it off and it'll just Low. Yeah. All right. That one's filled. And this one's filled down here. These are the ones that I came out early enough and saw that they needed water. So I filled them up before the workers come. If the workers come. Tabaski is over with and uh, a lot of them during Tabaski take extended stays or extended uh, uh, breaks. No problem. It's the most celebrated holiday in Gambia. They get a chance to go and see their family members and uh, I don't have no problem with that. You know what I'm saying? So... Anyway, always something, guys. Uh, see the little top? It keeps blowing off on the... Uh, turn it off right quick. Backup system or the solar. It's turned off. That's how we turn it on and off. But anyway, I got a get someone to crawl on top of there on top of the tank and put this top back in on that very top tank it blows off 
uh, periodically because when we bought the tanks, we called the manufacturer and said, hey, the tanks, the tops aren't fitting the tanks. And he said, oh, yeah, they'll fit, you know, you just got to do this and that and anything to make a sale. That's one thing about over here, guys. Uh, parts are all out of whack. You know what I'm saying? And when you explain it to the manufacturers and stuff, they're, they're so used to providing substandard material to the people that you just basically have to suck it up and drive on. So I'm hoping with a mallet or something, we can put it back in and punch it all the way in where it won't fly off again. You know what I'm saying? Coming out of the tank. So anyway, um, that's what's going on this morning at Black Acres of the Gambia. Uh, waiting for the workers to come in if they show up uh, and see how the day rolls. Again, it's going to be a cloudy day, but the solar panels are working. So we do have enough uh, light out to um, do what we got to do. So let me get ready to take attendance as the people come in and uh, give out the instructions on what need to be done today. Harvesting the uh, tomatoes and whatnot. Look at our apples. We drew some mama showing you these before. These bad boys are growing. Just got to be delicate in the spot that we uh, put them in to ensure continuous growth. So I come over here and some of these right here is from the previous plant. And the guy told me to pull them off and stuff. So that's what I do. So I do because it has nothing to do with the apple. It's the previous plant before it was grafted. So I pull those off periodically. Put this off here, and then we water these today, and uh, see how it works. And some days, and look at the dragon fruit. Again, here we have to be meticulous in how we. Uh, plant these so not to damage the plants and see how they're growing when we first got it It was just this we lost one of the five that was sent and I want to thank the sender again We only had this plant so You can see how it's expanding. We only had this one one two three Three layers and this one is curving over so I got to get some trellises made So we can do an easy transition from these buckets to the trellises and stuff. And pretty much the cocoa trees are still hanging. I tried to take them from the dirt and stick them in bags to continue to grow, but that didn't work so well. So before I move them again, they're going to permanent um, uh, position rather than from the bag to something else. All right, family. Uh, hanging in there, you know what I'm saying? Some days are less motivating than others. But at, at the end of the day, you got to hang in there, you know what I'm saying? Because you can see the results of your efforts and stuff, you know. Uh, just got to keep pushing one day at a time. Don't let one day blow you out. Because that will happen if you're coming over here and trying to do something. Or if you're coming over here not trying. If you're coming over here to do something of a large scale, you're going to have some days that set you back, just like an illusion, you know, but I think it happens more so there than here. The setbacks that you have to go through and overcome. On the continent pales in comparison to the illusion. So anyway, uh, this is Rick, a.k.a. Sweet Daddy signing out on what's going on out here in the morning hey blackie Killette. hey red hey girl 
you the leader of the pack and you still a puppy. That's my, my cow chaser, my security, my everything. Yo, oh, you want me to rub you now? Okay, okay. You deserve it, girl, because you the, you the top dog. All right, let me get out of here, fam. Bye. Oh, bye for now. Hey, Red, you okay? A lot of people have been asking us for pit bull puppies, and we think they're Red. Oh, Red and uh, uh, Hershey have uh, made it and stuff, so, you know, maybe... Uh, during the middle or end of rainy season, we'll have some more pit bull puppies. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.